Hi, I'm Charlotte. Welcome to the Bad Belly. Before I get the ball rolling with my YouTube videos and posts and going into my FODMAP diet and the restrictions and everything else, I thought I should put up some sort of a disclaimer just to let everybody know that I am not a doctor, I'm not a dietitian or a nutritionist or a nurse. I am not a scientist at all. I am not an expert of any kind. Um, I'm just a normal person who's been through some absolutely crazy shit, especially with regards to my gastrointestinal situation. Um, I've been put on a crazy diet and uh, I'm just trying to fuddle my way through everything and, and figure out how it's going to work. But I don't have, I'm not medical anything. Um, I don't have IBS. Um, I don't have celiac disease or colitis. I've been placed on a low FODMAP diet, um, which is most commonly prescribed uh, for IBS patients because it might be my very last chance at a normal gastrointestinal life. Um, people don't talk about this stuff a lot, so it's been really easy for me to forget that normal people go to the bathroom like once a day, not half a dozen times or more. Um, so yeah, there's that. Um, but if I don't have IBS, what do I have? Um, that's a great question. Who knows? Maybe there's somebody out there who does. That person is definitely not me, or so far at least any of the specialists or doctors who've treated me or saved my life. Um, I have a damaged pancreas. How damaged? And what does that mean? I should probably back up just a little bit first. Um, so your pancreas is the organ that's responsible for um, making enzymes and insulin, among a bunch of other stuff, but those are kind of the two big jobs and the two big jobs that really are impacting me right now. Um, when it gets inflamed, the itis part, you have pancreatitis. Um, so that explains that bit. It's not fun. It's very painful. Um, the kind I had was a necrotizing pancreatitis, so that means that parts of my pancreas died. My, I guess the whole thing was in the process of dying, but parts of it died and they liquefied. Um, and then that liquid became and joined uh, the two and a half plus liters of pus and liquefied pancreas um, that my gastro guy extracted during my first procedure. Um, so now that we've covered the pancreas part, um, we can move on to my gallbladder. Um, once I was well enough, I had it removed. They're not sure if it was a contributing factor um, to my necrotizing pancreatitis or not. And it's one of those things that um, the only way we could have found out if it was my gallbladder that caused the pancreatitis was if it happened again and my gallbladder caused it and they caught it in that moment and were able to see a gallstone or something. Um, it would have been basically the same course as last time, is my understanding. So I would have had pancreatitis and they just would have had to treat it. They couldn't stop it. They just would have known my gallbladder was to blame. And then once I was better, they could have taken my gallbladder out once they were sure that it was my gallbladder. Or we could just opt to have my gallbladder out and not worry about that anymore. I hadn't really understood the whole living with an axe swinging over your head metaphor until I had a very large metaphorical sword careening back and forth uh, over my head for the better part of six months. It was, I don't know, I hate to say it was like having a ticking time bomb, but I knew that if my gallbladder threw a stone and it got caught in my already badly damaged pancreas, I could be back in the hospital and dealing with it all again. Um, so that was really a risk that uh, we were not willing to take. I certainly wasn't willing to take. Um, it wasn't an easy process. And um, if I had my gallbladder now, my life maybe would be easier. Um, but I, I don't know. I, I think my overall existence would have become harder because I would have been so worried about it. Um, all the time. So I, I really don't regret having it taken out. If you're somebody who's had their gallbladder out or you've had gallbladder issues before, then you'll know the kind of risks that are associated um, and what your life can look like long term. If you have it taken out, there can be lifelong side effects. Um, 
but yeah, that's part number two of what I affectionately refer to as my dietary trifecta of doom. Um, so what about part three? Well, um, now that you've had the chance to meet my fucked up pancreas and the hole in my gut, uh, where my gallbladder used to live that I affectionately refer to as Ronald, um, you can go on ahead and meet my pre-diabetes. I kind of did it backwards because I wasn't pre-diabetic. I just became diabetic first. Um, and then I was um, fortunately able to beat the diabetes once I came home from hospital um, and become just pre-diabetic, which is the state I'm living in now and one that I'm really hoping that I can beat. Um, they don't know. It's one of those big question marks with me. If um, Does my pancreas have enough beta cells to make enough insulin? for me to leave the pre-diabetic range. I, they don't know, I don't know. Um, the only way we can find out is if I keep working at my diet and I keep trying um, to get out of the pre-diabetic range on my own. But there's, I don't know, there's like so many other things with me, there's just no real way um, of predicting it. Um, but I got, sorry, I got, uh, I got sidetracked. Um, the, the diabetes that I got um, was a side effect of the TPN, which is um, total parenteral nutrition, um, which is a tube slash IV feeding. Um, also, I had necrotizing pancreatitis, so that may have impacted my body's ability to make and regulate insulin. Um, some of my doctors were convinced that I would be full-blown diabetic for life, um, maybe even most of them. Uh, but they're, especially the endocrinologists, um, but some of them thought that they weren't so sure. So I decided to hitch my wagon to that way of thinking. Um, and I just decided that I, I couldn't do it anymore. I had to try. I couldn't handle any more needles. I would had months and months of dozens of needles a day. Um, I couldn't take the constant blood sugar track checking and, and the tracking of everything. Nope. No, I was, I was just done. And at my very first appointment, after I was released from the hospital with my GP, one of the first things I did was ask about coming off the insulin. But again, they don't, they don't know. Um, and I don't know if it's diagnostically possible for them to establish which beta cells I have, um, where they are, whether or not they're making insulin. I, I don't know. Um, I did know that I wasn't going to side with um, the doctors who felt that the only way I should go was to give my pancreas a break um, and just keep injecting insulin myself. Um, rightly or wrongly, I completely aligned myself with the people who were in the use it or lose it camp. Um, and I was lucky because my GP was really open, it, open sorry, um, about not knowing whether we could do it or not, but just starting the process, taking it one step at a time. Um, and I know I was really lucky in that regard. And yeah, I know that especially because I went to see so many other people who were bound and determined that they were, you know, put me on Lantus for the rest of my life and that was going to be the end of it. And that just wasn't, it wasn't acceptable until I had tried something else. Um, so at my second appointment with him, I let him know that I had a goal and I wanted to be completely off insulin. Mm, roughly two months from that period, um, he did the math and he agreed that if I kept trending the way that I was, it wasn't impossible. So that uh, having him believe that it wasn't impossible made me believe that it was and um, I worked really hard at it and two months later I did come off insulin. I'm not diabetic anymore. I'm still pre-diabetic. I might be pre-diabetic for the rest of my life. Don't know. Um, there might be nothing I can do about it. Don't know. I do know that um, I'm going to try. That's, that's all I can do is just keep trying. Okay, so we have done the disclaimer. We have covered my dietary trifecta of doom. Um, next time I'll come back and I will talk a little bit about what each of those three pieces actually means for me from a day-to-day -day perspective. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for your support. 
Um, you can catch me on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter. There are links to everything uh, in the description to this. Please feel free to comment. I would love some feedback and any encouragement that you have. Have a wonderful night. Thanks for coming along for the ride.